We are live and direct straight from New York with American illustrator Nicholas Draper, Ivy. We are live. We are live. We are live. Did I say welcome to the main event? Oh. Grab that thing, Are you mad? Oh, oh man. Behave before you talk about what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yo. What's good, Thank bro? Thank you for having me. Good. It's been, it's been a minute. The TCN fam been asking for you. You're finally here. Do you know what I'm saying? We're going to chop it down. And the world today is going to get to find out more about you. Oh, no. All <laughs> 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 uh, right. So one thing I always start off with is who is Nicholas Draper Ivy? Are you asking me that? Uh, I mean, that's a tough question. I think, yeah, obviously I would say artist, but that's not, it's like you think about, um, that was that anger management movie where he starts listing all these things and it's just like, no, just tell us who you are. Yeah. It's like, what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that's what I'm thinking about right now. I'm like, how do I answer that? It always gets everyone. No one's ever ready for that question. Yeah. Who are you? It's like, you start questioning you know? yourself. Who the fuck am I? Like, who have I been like, this whole time? Artist, if, you, if you say, well, you know, I'm an artist. Like, no, that's your profession. I just want to know who you are. And it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I think, you know, I don't want to be really pretentious to say I am I you know I am just whatever you say I am I don't know I, it, it doesn't it doesn't make sense so I don't really know I just I can honestly say you know my profession is I'm an artist you know I was um born in Lansing Michigan raised in Detroit um lived in Georgia for a little bit and then I went back to Detroit and then I think eventually I end up making the move to New York. Um, but I've just been, you know, doing my art for as long as I can remember. And it's, that's been like my whole, you know, journey, just like growing as a, as a person. Um, it's kind of weird. Cause it's like, if you had asked me who I was, in my 20s, I would have given you a very confident answer, like a very sure answer, you know. And now it's like it's a little bit different because I think when I was in my 20s, I was very headstrong. I was very like, I'm going to be one of the greatest artists that's ever, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to say, I'm going to like change the world. And that's who I am. And, you know, that's my ninja way and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love that. And, um, and now I'm kind of at this point where it's like... You're like Hokage mode. And it's just like, it's not about me. You know what I mean? Like, that's how I, that's how I look at it. Like, I'm just trying to do the best I can and just kind of keep to myself and just move in silence and not announce so much of, like, who I am or, you know, what I do, which naturally leads to people making up a persona for you. <laughs> and so it's like, oh, he's this and he's that. And he's all about, you know, and it's like, no, oh, well, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's not it. Not it, you know? So that's, that's, that's the world of the internet kind of thing, you know? Um, Cause you put yourself out there, I guess like a narrative is always bound to happen mm -hmm. and, you know, and like you said, if you're a quiet guy, then, you know, it's, that's, that's about to happen at some point. It's kind of crazy. Cause I remember when Instagram was the thing, it took like all my friends to convince me to just do that, to make an Instagram. And I didn't want to make an Instagram or anything like that. The social media, like, oh man, you would do so well in there. I was like, I don't want to deal with that, you know? And then well, come on, man, just do it. You know, like, ah. and then I did. And then, you know, that, came what it became and then it was like i avoided twitter i avoided twitter like the place I, I did not go anywhere near it and it wasn't until i started working at dc and then my editor was like 
hey, you should get on, you should get on Twitter. You need to be on Twitter. I'm like, you don't want to be on Twitter. <laughs> and they're like, go ahead, do it. What's the worst that could happen? And I'm like, please don't make me, because I have thoughts and I want to put them out there. And I love my and job. Not even, I'm not trying to lose it. <laughs> and the thing is, is like, my thoughts are not even really jabs at other people. There'll be jabs at myself right. on like on the app. And people are like, oh my God, what's this kid going? Through? Half of it is said in sarcasm and half of it is like I'm being funny, but I guess the tone, like the inflection doesn't come across through text. And people are like, it's just so dark. And I'm like, no, guys, I'm, I'm kidding. I don't actually feel that. I don't actually feel bad today. I'm just typing. I, you know. Uh, that's that's crazy because like I I, <laughs> I was kind of like also forced into Instagram as well because mm. it's like you know your content creator you got to be out there I'm like for fuck's sake bro I got to do this and like and sometimes I have to force myself to like post stuff on Instagram and I get it like you know we're content creators and we have to be visual and being stuff like and being out there but like Twitter's my shit man Twitter that's that's me like I'm I'm actually scared <laughs> I'm actually scared of of going back to my early days on Twitter and see the kind of stuff I was posting. Um, mm. I remember one time I'm, I must have posted uh, one of Papoose's lyrics. I think it's a uh, hundred ways to die by Papoose. And mm. I just remember listening to that. I was like, yo, this is going it. And I just remember writing that. And I think that made it dumb. I must have also reposted on my, on my Facebook. Cause this, the, t- the days we used to put like Facebook status. And people just say, yo, you all right? You okay? He's like, I'm like, it's, it's, it's a lyric, people. Like, I'm I'm good. I ain't got no guns. I ain't got no shank, no nothing on me. I'm good. But yeah, man. But no, man. Twitter, Twitter, Twitter is my thing. Um, cool. Let's get, let's run it all the way back to when your relationship with Japanese anime started. Well, that definitely goes back to... I want to say like elementary school and my, my dad, my dad has a really like is a really big influence on how I approach anime and how I've like, you know, grown to appreciate anime and manga and all of that stuff. Um, that aspect of it, I think came from, from him and the, I guess the incorporation of like, I you, people want to say like black culture that actually that part came i would say from my upbringing from my from my mom like you know and just kind of like fuse those things but in terms of like anime in itself my dad showed me and i think i've talked about this in other interviews but like my dad showed me um akira i was like a a youngin but he showed me he saw that i liked that's a great Dragon place Ball. to start. <laughs> yeah, he showed me. He's, he's like, "Oh, you like Dragon Ball Z?" And he, he saw that I like the Lion King, and he's like, hmm. "Yeah, I'm gonna show you Akira." He showed me this shit uh, when I was like, I don't remember how old I was? I was like 10, 11. I don't remember, but he showed me this, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" Like seeing that at that age, uh, I remember the scene that. I won't say traumatized me, but the scene that stuck to me the most was when Tetsuo is in the hospital and he's like walking in the hallway and the people are running up to him and he fucking like does that shit and they all like splatter. As a kid, seeing that, that I wasn't ready for that. I was just like <laughs> and the, the thing but, is, the thing well, is, as a as a kid, everything is like 10 times from where it yeah. actually is. So I can imagine you see that hallway scene and you'd be like. Yo, I'm in a whole different I've dimension. Never, I've never seen anything like that in my life. Um, I think my first um manga of choice was because that's when I think the right around the age of is it 12 or 13? I can't remember exactly, but there was a point in time where the Shonen Jump magazines were just starting to come out, like in like the States or whatever. And I think the first manga that I chose to read was Shaman King and um, Hikari no Go. 
like those two manga really caught my attention and i think after that i kept going to like naruto and i was just like oh naruto this is pretty cool too and i remember seeing one piece and i remember seeing one piece and thinking to myself i don't really like this very much there's no way this is gonna last and here we are years later one piece is still going and you have to respect that you have to respect that. like one piece like i don't care how you feel about it it's like Ichiro Oda is a is a genius and he's been doing this and it's been going and going and going and going. You don't even have to like it, but you can sit there and you have to respect that. Bro. It's like this is a, has moved so many people, has been going for so long. Like it may not be your cup of tea. It's not necessarily my cup of tea, but like my girlfriend is like slowly getting me into it, and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> listen there's no way of avoiding that you know i started one piece what sometime sometime last year and i, I remember i started watching one piece and bleach at the same mm. time and bear in mind i've had i've had bleach on the hard drive since college days so i've had it for like over 10 years but i uh-huh. think i watched one or two episodes and i kind of just left it there and i was like okay i really need to dive into this anime stuff Jump into One Piece and uh, Bleach at the same time. Five episodes in, I completely dash uh, uh, Bleach to the side and I'm full on hit One Piece. It's just amazing. And what's the crazy thing about it is that we're currently rewatching um, Naruto Shippuden. And I'm like, bro, the pacing instinct is horrible. Like, and obviously, like, they were done at the same time, like, pretty much around the same time. So I'm like, how did, and when I first watched Naruto, I really loved it. And now I watch it, I'm like, I can't wait to get to this arc. I can't wait to get to this arc because just the nostalgia of it and the kind of fights that we get are cool. But One Piece, watching it now as a full-on adult, I can really appreciate it, man. And and I just finished a thriller, um, thriller bark arc sick 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 so i don't know how long you've been watching it but bro i haven't i've been i've been enjoy, i've been avoiding it as don't much as i can it. i see i see bits and pieces of it don't i see bits it. and pieces of it I'm like but there's one character in particular that i was like see if the, if the story was about him i might give it a, i might give it a shot i think the character's name is uh law like i think that character like what i've seen from him i'm like oh, that, oh. that guy looks cool mm. and law he's a, i think he's um he's got like the hat and like the, the it's like the spots on his hat he's got like a katana oh i ain't he's got like there kinda... yet i ain't got there yet and oh no i'm <laughs> <laughs> i'm thinking yeah. law like what did i miss it but no i like i'm only like 300 episodes in. is talking about you know but you know one piece it, it's not really the thing that i would gravitate towards my stuff is like i like a little bit more like dark stuff like my dad got me into um like animatrix and like i found out about like studio 4c and like mm-hmm. that was like my my gem like i loved you know stuff like that you know that era of like you know ergo proxy and samurai champloo and like mm-hmm. you know was from like that that pocket of animation I really, really liked. Um, and I still like enjoy it to this day. Um Chorus. Chorus was a big, a big influence on me too. Like I remember I didn't have that figure right there. Like um Chorus, I thought was the coolest shit in the world. And I still kind of feel that way. Um I'm just trying to like get that feeling like in my own work. But yeah, anime. It's it's had a hold on me for many many years and like yeah there's like American comic stuff you know your milestone you know your Marvel you know comics you know some DC stuff obviously there was like the um, Bruce Tim uh, Batman animated series all that type of stuff but at the end of the day like my heart kept going back to anime and it it shows like in my stuff um, I think it was that and it was um like square enix like all the final mm-hmm. fantasy stuff mm-hmm. okay but you know what's crazy is 
I remember the coolest thing in the world to me was when there was that uh, Madhouse did that Last Order Final Fantasy. So it was like the Christ around the Crisis Core era. Like there was a time they dropped an anime, mm-hmm. and it was sitting around. Are you ta- are you talking about Advent Children? It was it wasn't Advent Children. Advent Children was the was the three D you know one. Last Order was like it was like an anime that Madhouse did. Okay, um, it's on Zach and like. I remember thinking that was the coolest thing in the in the world. Like, yeah, you, when you look at it, it's like such a deep cut, and like you, you either know it or you don't. But if you if you see it, you'd be like, oh, okay, I, I can see. I'll, it. I'll I'll have to look into it. I, actually, I've I've recently uh, started my journey into Final Fantasy. So I've started with mm-hmm. Final Fantasy VII remake. Uh, currently, also playing Final Fantasy sixteen because, uh, like, growing up, I could never get those games. Because they came yeah. in so many discs, I think the price was a bit too high. So my mom was always like, why pay for this game? And you can get like, you know, a couple of demos. That's what she used to give me. She used to give me the demos. You know when the demos that used to come in the magazines? Yeah. That's what yeah. she used to get me kind of thing. Um, and like, I kind of had to like, you know, raise the money myself to buy games. So Final Fantasy was always like, I would watch it through my friends. So I never really yeah. played yeah. it. So... It wasn't until late last year that I really started playing Final Fantasy. I started my journey. But uh, Advent Children, for over, I want to say, 10, 15 years, was my number one animated movie. I remember watching oh. Advent Children for the first time. I watched the, the trailer. <laughs> the first trailer. So many times. Do you remember when that shit dropped? On like, it was like G4 or like the Cinematheque. Have you ever watched that? Like it came on TV and it was like, you know, you see the Buster Sword and then you see Cloud standing there and it's and then that fucking theme starts going, and you're just like, this is the coolest <laughs> thing in the world. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't remember how I came around it. So basically, mm-hmm. because I studied uh digital animation in college, um, so I was we was, I think we was doing the modeling um semester where we're learning to model and stuff like that. So um, I went to find, I wanted to do weapons. Don't ask me why I wanted to do weapons. So I came across the Buster Sword. And then I I think that's where I came across the movie. Because one of the things I used to do all the time back then was like, I would go deep into the rabbit hole. So let's say if I'm drawing something and if there is a movie or a clips or something, I'm going all the way in. So I found the movie. And I put this movie on and bear in mind, I'm supposed to be doing this, this modeling work and (laughs) I'm here watching Advent Children. Like, and I, I think I watched it like three times back to back to back. So I'm like, yo, this is crazy, you know? And I think this might be, uh, 2011, 12. And my mind was just blown. Like, and I, obviously I knew about, of, of Final Fantasy, but I never had played it. So I'm just watching this movie and these characters and I'm seeing Tifa and th- the whole scene with the piano, with the flowers, I'm losing my shit. Like, I think that's like one of my favorite scenes. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's so interesting to see whenever I hear other people's journey into anime. Because like my one, I want to say started with Dragon Ball. Uh... And also we used to watch, um, I'm not sure what's, 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 what's in English, but we used to call it Captain Tubats- Tubatsa, which was the football uh, anime. Mm-hmm. And they had twins and stuff. And that, we used to eat and sleep, like watch that shit all the time. Uh, I think those are my, f- my very first memories of, of anime. But then obviously you had the, the adult rated versions as well that we would sneak in, take it from my cousins and kind of watch it. And, and yeah, man. Oh, Evangelion as well. That was another one I used oh, yeah, to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was it? The one with the group of girls. Oh, and I think they're kind of like, they got like this stuff and it would change um, into like. Not Sailor. Say that again? No. It's, it's not Sailor Moon. Yeah, Sailor Moon. That's it. Sailor Moon. Okay. So like those are the animes we used to watch back in the day, like in Portugal, because that's that's the ones we used to get. And then like once I moved to to England, they just got Dragon Ball, and I was like, wait, like I was watching this when I was a kid, but then they had the dubbed version, 
and that threw me um, completely off because I'm like Goku Goku's voice sounded like a girl and I was like why does Goku sound like this and Piccolo's voice threw me off so I never so for a while I distanced myself from from anime because everything was getting here was dubbed and it was also chopped up because they didn't want to show the blood and stuff like that yeah yeah so uh so it wasn't until I got into uni that I kind of like start getting more and more into it 2010 you attend Savannah State Savannah College of Art mm. and Design. Scared, yeah. There's a reason why I'm asking you this question. I'm going to circle back to it. Okay. Why that college, and what was your experience like? Oh man, um, when I went to Scad, I wanted to do, uh, comics, like you know, manga or whatever. Um, I think the it was between that and there was um, this other art school. I think it was like in Atlanta, but I can't remember what the, what the school was called. Um, I went there and I was asking, like, do, do you guys do comics here? And they were just like, oh, no, we don't do comics here. You're going to have to go to like, you know, SCAD. And I was like, oh, man, okay. So then I applied to that and, you know, I managed to get in. I remember when I first... Um, went down for sorry, you're gonna hear sirens. This is New York. When I first went down in 2010. I met with, I think it was it was a, a professor named Tom Lyle. He passed away sadly. Um, and you know, I got to meet him. And I remember when I first met him, you know, he hadn't even seen my work. You know, he asked me what my interests were, and I was like, oh, I want to do manga and I want to do, you know, this type of stuff. And my mom was sitting next to me and it's crazy. Cause like he, ended, he was a uh, person that did uh, Robin the third comics. And those comics were things that my dad had given me like some like years ago, my mom kind of confiscated them, but then I ended up getting them back. And I was like, Oh, this is the guy who drew that comic, you know, all those years ago. So it was like a full circle moment. It was super crazy. We're sitting at the table and I'm like, you know, I want to do manga and that's what I want to do. And he's just like, so you want to do, you want to do manga? I'm like, yes, sir. And he's like, you want to go to Japan? You want to do stuff in Japan? And I was like, I mean, yeah, eventually. And he's like, well, I've got some news for you. It's probably not going to happen. You know? <laughs> and it was just like, he said it like right there. He was like, you know, it's like that kind of thing is like, you know, it's, it's a, Steep hill, climb up, and blah blah blah, you know. And then he saw my work, and I think at the time I had like some of my like OG like Dream Vesper stuff in there, and like I had like some other drawings I had done, and some pages, and you know I was drawing backgrounds. I was like super into backgrounds. I saw what was it uh, Tekon Kinkri when I was growing up, and that Shinji Kimura's work in there made me just want to draw backgrounds. Like I was just like, I have to draw backgrounds every fucking now. So he was like looking at my work and then he like stopped and kind of leaned back. And then he like looked at me and then he's like looking around and then he like leaned in and he like said to me and my mom and he's like, your son is not the average bear like that comes in. He's like looking at it. He's like, okay, now I see what it is you're trying to do. He's like, usually, you know, we have to like make our students draw backgrounds, you know, but you're, you don't have an issue with that. Okay. So he like gave me some, some pointers and was really kind and whatever. And then I remember waiting for the application to come through and I wanted to know if I, if I got accepted and eventually I did. And I, you know, attended SCAD 2010, 2011, but then I couldn't go back due to like family and financial stuff. And I ended up having to like drop out and it crushed me. Like I was like so sad because I felt like at that time I had like found my, my tribe. Like I found like, you know, different people that, that got it, that understood what I was trying to do. And the professors were really kind to me. And, you know, there were some students there that, really cool, you know, and understood what I was going for. And it was interesting. Um, I was a little bit, I definitely was a little bit more hot 
hot headed when I was younger though. Like, but I just had that that like unmovable. I guess like we called it the shonen spirit, like as a as a kid. So we would just like I had like the, I had like tiny hair and like all that type of stuff, and I was just like, you couldn't tell me I wasn't going to do what I was going to do, right. you know. And I just held on to that, and then I couldn't go back. So after that, I ended <clears throat> up going to um, having to go back to Detroit, and I hated it. I just, I was just like, this is not fulfilling for me. Like I, I want to go back. And I just knew that even if I wasn't in school, as long as I was in Savannah, if I was around those people, you know, some connection could be made. So I remember, I think it was, um, I want to say that summer I was, I was watching one of those summer times, I was watching Gurren Lagan, I think. And like, it inspired me to like, Get out there and just like try. Um, end up moving back, and the first place I lived in, I couldn't get a job. So then, like the the I was rooming with was like kind of a jerk, but he was just like, "No, you gotta go. You can't stay here." Blah blah blah. So now I was like about to be on the street, and then my friends were like, "Nick's about to do what?" Like you gotta be homeless. It's like no, this, we, where is he? We gotta find him, and they kind of came through. And um, you know, from that point on, I ended up like having to stay with my friend. I think Bobby, um, is another artist. He also went to SCAD, and I stayed with him for like that year. And I wasn't a role. I was just trying to like get you know get work or whatever. And eventually, from that point. Um, I ended up going back to Detroit, like thinking, okay, well, maybe, maybe this time I can go and still couldn't go. And I was like, well, I'm not going to stay here. I guess I'll go right back to Savannah. And then I think I stayed with my friend, Nate. And that's how we became like really, really close friends. Like it's my best friend. And at that time I was like really trying to hone in on like my faith and whatever, and like trying to grow spiritually as well as in my art it was hard like it was a tough tough time this is around 2011 2012 i want to say and then eventually you know i stayed in savannah and just kind of like tried to do my work and tried to like draw do the best i could and then eventually after that i think we get to like 2014 is when i started to make my move up to um new york with uh, Nate, it's like his folks kind of took me in, like pretty much like adopted me <laughs> as like, you know, part of the family. And then I just, you know, moved up here. And I've been up in New York ever since, but that's how that whole thing happened. Um, I'm definitely like shortening it. There's a lot of other crazy things that happened in between that time, but it was like, that's the streamlined version of right. all of that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's crazy because obviously... <clears throat> When I, when I first, you know, my journey into your work began at the um, DC, um, DC was doing the online event and they kind of mm. got us cyber nerds to like react live and, and then they had a segment where uh, they brought in the guys from Milestone to talk about. Mm, yeah, they were starting to the, the create create creators almost like a, a fund an initiative for mm -hmm. uh, people of color to get into the industry and stuff like that. And we was like, "Yo, like this is live," and they're saying, you know, the stuff that they've done, and and we're like looking at each other. And bear in mind, there's three of us, and we're like, and we've been in comics since we were kids, and we're like, "Yo, like I come, we've never heard of these guys. You know, we know of Static Shock because of the TV show, but." Mm -hmm you know, we, we eat comic books, you know, since we were kids. So, you know, as they, you know, they're showing comics. So I'm, I'm over here, like writing down, like, you know, what comic books to get, the kind of stuff to read, uh, you know, Icon, Rocket, which characters I've never heard before. So then, you know, Static is one that stood out to me because I'm like, yo, like, I know Static, mm -hmm. I've seen the show. So when I come across your work and we start doing the, the read-alongs on the stream, I'm like, yo, this problem is cold, man. Like, you know, you already know how I feel about your drawing style and stuff like that. 
And I'm like, I got to gotta know more about this guy. Like, where do you get this stuff from? Because I ain't never seen it mm. like that. Not this style, not with this source. Do you know what I'm saying? Not with this energy. So then mm. I'm like, yo, this dude went to Savannah. Now, you're wondering why am I so excited about that? So when I was in college, which is your high school here, uh, mm. I was doing arts. And so first year you do everything. Second year you choose your pathway, right? And I struggled picking my pathway because I can do anything. I can, you know, I can paint, I can draw, uh, I can do whatever. So then my teacher was like, Miss Lee, shout out to Miss Lee, man. She helped me up so much. And she was like, what do you like? Like when you go home, what kind of stuff do you get into? I'm like, yo, I love movies. I like my comics. I like my cartoons. So she's like, right, animation. That's what you're going to be doing here. I'm like, animation? Uh, there's no there's no animation department here in this class. She's like, you're going to be the first one. <laughs> so she was like, we're going to do some research and um, we're going to get you started next year for your second year. So that year I do end up doing claymation. And oh, okay, okay. it comes to the end of the year, towards the end of the year, she's like, okay, what are we going to do? And these times, so I used to play basketball as well. So while I'm studying, I'm following my basketball dream, right? And I had a bunch of friends who were going to the States. They were getting scholarships, right? To go play ball in the States. So I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm trying to bust case. I'm trying to get to the States as well. So she's like, cool. Let's find colleges that have a basketball program. You're going to do your SATs and but you gotta find a place and i'm like yo states is huge right it's like how am i supposed to pick she's like well research an estate where you feel like you'll be home much like you were saying mm. like finding like your village so i'm, I'm mm. like cool, okay what do i like about the states because obviously you know i've been watching movies since i was a kid i'm like yo <laughs> i'm like uh, i like <laughs> I like that kind of, so I get to, I get to, uh, Georgia, right? I get to mm. Georgia mm. and I'm like, I've always liked Georgia, man. I like the energy of Georgia, you know, plenty of water. I'm a water guy, the food, the music. I love jazz and blues. So I'm like, cool, let's find a college there. So I kind of break it down and I, I come to Savannah, uh, Savannah college. I'm like, yo, this place is for me, bruv. Like, this is me. Like, I can play ball here. I can do my art. I'll keep my mom happy. Because, you know, black parents, you're always trying to push you to go to university. And, you know, I did my SATs. Um, I was in contact with the school and everything was going fine. And I wasn't going to go into the basketball program uh, for a scholarship. It was going to be more through arts, right? So mm -hmm. I would be kind of like a walk-in to the basketball team. Um, turns out, so the lady that was sorting out my paperwork, I can't, I think because you have so many, um, stuff to do, like financial stuff, I need to secure something. So I kind of had to get, I had to get in touch with my dad's side of the family to back me up kind of stuff. And oh, I so remember that. it was a long process, like, and then <laughs> wow. it's a lot of shit. I'm like, <laughs> why I got to do all this? I'm just going to study. You know, you got to show uh, insurance, medical, all of this. I'm like, yo, this is yeah. nuts. So it takes yeah. us quite a while to get everything done. And when I finally get everything sorted, send it. She's, I think I call in the morning. She's not in because she's the one who's dealing with my, because I'm an international student, right? So I think she's like my, uh, like an international uh, student officer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She comes back in the afternoon. She calls me back. Yo, the last spot went this morning. <laughs> and bear in mind, I took a gap year to sort this out. So I'm like, the last scholarship is gone. And she's like, yeah, but you can apply next year. And in my mind, because I was so tapped into basketball, I was like, yo, I've already taken a gap year. I don't want to, you know, wait another year because now my chances of playing is going to, you know, I'm like, ah. Oh. 
I'm like, fuck it, man. Like, I'll just stay in England and I'll just find literally the same. I think the next day I went to find a university uh, in West London to go and study animation. And that's how I ended up studying it. But when I found that you was going there, I was like, I was like, yeah, man, that's my bro. <laughs> if I, cause it's, and it's funny you saying that you, a year later, you left, right? Yeah. So if we are to put the timelines together, and if I was to go, and if you was to stay, we would have bumped into each other. Yeah, you probably, you yeah. would have you would have been a year above me, but we would have been in the same college. How funny yeah, is that? So we still, still don't know each other because you know all the black people know everybody. That's just how it goes. <laughs> just, like, just, like, just a nod. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> yeah. Like, ah, it's, like, it's just, you know, it just you would just bond like it's just like everybody knows everybody. <clears> you know. Yeah, man. But, and and it was so funny finding you through static. And I was like, yeah, man, like, I, I know for a fact that if I was to bump into you, we would have just like, gel right away, man. So that's what's up. Um, I'm thinking about uh, was X-Men Days of Future Past, where it's like, to be careful, to be patient with me. I was very different. I was very different. <laughs> <laughs> In 2011, right? It's just, I was just like, oh man, I was going through a lot. Like, just I think, like I think everybody was trying to find themselves, man. You know, that's that's the yeah. That's when you you leave your home. You know, you're growing up. You're meeting different people, while into different stuff, and uh, you know, you're learning how to deal with the world. You're learning your responsibilities, mm -hmm. and you know. You're learning about yourself as well. You know, before you had your parents to do everything for you. Now you're on your on the world on your own, where it's like, you know, you gotta survive. Uh my parents definitely uh subscribe to the well, you know, once you're past 18, you know, <laughs> and that kind of thing, and once you hit 18, like I make this joke, my mom hates this joke, but you know, I like my parents definitely subscribe to the Heihachi Mishima school of <laughs> Like get off the cliff, you like, he'll survive, you know, and see what happens. It's like, mom hates that. You get so mad when I say that. I'm like, that's, that's <laughs> I think, you know? I think that's gonna run in the family. Yeah, when your kid comes, you're also gonna throw him off the cliff. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> you gotta keep uh, it in the no. family, man. <laughs> I don't know, look what happened. Kazia, Kazia came back. Do his <laughs> down. Oh, I don't want to do that. Oh, do that. oh shit, so, man. Oh, I love it though. All right, cool. Um, tell me about um, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this properly, but show Gen Genesis, yo oh, Genesis, yeah, 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 yeah. Talk to me about that. Oh God. <laughs> well, okay, so. Exogenesis, first of all, I should probably go ahead and, and say this because it's true. Like, that project did open up a lot of doors for me later on. Let's go ahead and just get that out the way. Give it its flowers. You know, it, it was definitely helpful for when it was helpful when it needed to be. Mm -hmm. um, Exogenesis was, I think that was, that was created by, you know, Johnny O'Brien and I think Trey, Trey McIntosh like wrote it. And then they brought me on as like the, you know, the artist, like I ended up doing uh co-writing as well. Cause I was like, okay, there's, there's some stuff in here that we can, can, you know, tweak a little bit. And then they, I was the artist and co-writer for it. Um, and that was, whew. That was one of those projects that was like it was my first like serialized manga. And I'm definitely, I don't think I was I was as good as I as I thought I would, I was. Like when I go back and look at those drawings, I'm like oh, this is, hmm. there's some stuff where I'm like this is cool, and there's some stuff where I'm like you were definitely still figuring it out here. Um, but that was that was a tough process. I remember because I didn't have any assistants. You know, mangaka usually have assistants and all of that, so. I was just like doing all the backgrounds. I was doing the pencils, inks, 
like screen tones, doing the lettering on the computer. I didn't have an iPad at the time. I had like a tablet. So I was just sitting there just like fucking trying to get everything right. Uh, it was a lot, you know, having to scan each page. I was, doing, I was doing a lot of work on that, on that project. And, you know, cause I, cause I believed in it, you know what I mean? Like, and I was just like, I really think there's something here. And, you know, it was, it was frustrating, I think, at times because it was like, I don't, I can't say that other people on the team didn't believe in it, but I don't think everybody on the team had the same vision as I had for it. You know what I mean? So it, it kind of made things a little bit, you know, difficult. And then, you know, we w- had the conventions and stuff like that. And that was, that was fun a little bit. That's how I met Zeno. Cause we, they did the, um, what did they do? Uh, the, the anime pilot for it, which was very different from how the <clears throat> comic manga was, but that was how I ended up uh, becoming friends with Zeno Robinson. Cause like he did the voice for Darius and we just kind of like bonded over that. And then ended up meeting like um, a producer um, named uh, Eric Calderon. And like, he ended up like kind of being a mentor for me for like a little bit. And he opened up some doors for me. And now we've kind of gone and doing like our own, our own different things. But like, you know, I can say if I hadn't done EXO, if I had quit that book, um, I probably wouldn't be doing static. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't be doing static if I didn't ex- if I didn't do exogenesis. I wouldn't have gotten any of the other opportunities, I think, um, if I had quit that book. Like if I wouldn't have met so many other people if I had quit that book. So even though it was like difficult, it was like it had to happen. You know what I mean? That's how I look at it. It's like, this was really frustrating and really difficult to make, but if I hadn't done it, all these other things might not have happened. Right. So yeah, that's how I, that's how I choose to look at it. (laughs) If that makes sense. Now, prior to that project, you met a Japanese manga illustrator, Takeshi Obata, who looked at your work, praised your work and is that is that the timeline where it kind of like it pushed you to be like okay I'm really gonna bat bat up the EXO Genesis, you know like getting mm. getting that sort of like yeah this phrase. was right before that that was this was right before that because I remember um, I met Obata when I first came to New York when I first moved here um, and I met um, editor Yoshida um as well and like they had saw like the dream vesper one shot like well about saw like a drawing i did of crow and then yoshida saw the dream vesper uh one shot he was looking at it and like he really liked what he saw and it was it was so painful because it was like he's looking at like huh this looks like this would have like you know done well in the one shot program and i was just like Oh, you know, but he's like, well, you know, next time enter again. I have not entered anything since then, but you know, it was still cool to like hear that from them. That gave me some confidence to like kind of keep going. But I still want to like return to you know Dream Vesper and everything like that. It's Mm -hmm. just, hey, I'm very particular about how I want to go about it, and I think sometimes. People will just they just put it out and just go, oh, that's that. And I'm going to, but I'm like, my vision for it and the people I want to work with, I kind of know it's like, oh no, I need, I need to get some really strong people behind me to, to do this the way that I want this and the scale that I want. And it's going to take me years to do it. Like, I just, I just knew that I'm like, it's going to take me years. Like I, I know. Um, and that's why. I knew like, okay, well, if I take off, if I do exogenesis, this will help me like get all the ugly out, you know, right. like, let me just see if, you know, what I can do with this. And then after doing exogenesis, I remember I finished, I finished exogenesis and then 
that's when Erica called me and he was just like, he's like, Hey, you know, what do you, what do you got going on? And I was just like, I'm retired. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, so I'm tired. I don't want to work on anybody else's thing. I just want to do my own stuff right now. I really, really don't want to work on anything else. Like I just, I'm so tired. And, he, and I remember it clear as day. I can't talk about what the project is or was, but I remember he said, it's not, it's like it's out there. Um, after I finished Exogenesis, he called me and I kind of blew up. I was like, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to work on anybody. I just want to just do my own stuff. He's like, oh, really? You sure? Because, you know, I've got this project, you know, with uh, with Watanabe, you know, and I was like, huh? <laughs> he's like, he's like, yeah, you, you know, if you don't want to do it, I was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you know, like, wait, wait, tell me more about this. And then that ended up happening. But that, I say that to say, if I had quit, you know, if I had given up on that, mm -hmm. you know, that would have happened. But even then it was like, okay. Maybe I can, maybe I can, you know, work on this or see what this is going to be. Right. And working with that project, you know, my name kind of got around in some, some circles. I don't know if they, if they made it public knowledge that they were on, but somehow because of that thing, that ended up leading to me doing static. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So like the entirety of static, the reason that static looks like, well, at least in that, the first few issues, especially in these season two, the reason why static took on such a like animated looking style was because I was training myself to work in animation. And I was trying to learn how to make these, these camera shots and everything and make the, the style, like almost like a style guide, not really, but like a reference point of like, okay, when we do this, this is how this should look. But I did that with static. So that's why static feels like an anime because I was practicing for anime, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I'm waiting so much for saying that, but it's, <laughs> but it's okay. Is everyone was like, why does it look like this? Why is he drawing like this all of a sudden? I'm like, no, I, 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 I loved it, man. I thought the shots were like, that's one of the things that pulled me in as well. Like the shots was just like, yo, like how is this brother just like half a page? And then like the way, and like you're saying, now that you're mentioning, it's like, yeah, man, like you was really going for like, you know, like a, like a short film kind of thing, you know, like an animated. So no, nah, man, that's, that's, that's super legit. And obviously when you're reading what, like just going through the panels, like you feel like the motions of it, like, and even it got to one point, I was like, yo, like, is this brother doing animation or something? Because this feels very, like, fluid, like, especially with the shots as well. It kind of takes me to, um, like, Zack Snyder when he does, uh, when he did um, uh, The Watchmen. Like, mm. some of the shots, you're like, yo, this is, this is comic shots, like, what he's going for, you know? So when, I, when I'm reading Static, I'm like, I, I can pick up, a thing or two even without the knowledge then that that's what you were training for so hey man that's that's super legit and i was gonna ask like is that also where you kind of like double down into like merging like afro with anime like is that like tell me a bit more about that how does we mm. evolve into that okay well let's see now we have to go back in time uh, so now we go back to like 2000, uh, like 2010, 2011. And that was a interesting point because I remember what I was looking for with my work, especially like Instagram, you didn't really see it, you know? And I was trying to bring in like, like I love Final Fantasy and I wanted to see that, but I wanted to see that with like black characters. But I wanted to see it like done in a way that it wasn't a joke. It wasn't played for laughs. It was like, no, what if we really like drew it and took it seriously? And that was just kind of my stuff. Obviously you had like, you know, Kingdom Hearts, you have, you know, Final Fantasy, you have Devil May Cry, you have all that stuff that's that inspires me. Ashura's Wrath, I thought was the coolest fucking thing in the world. But like, I was like, I want to do that, but I want to do it with like characters that look like me and not in a, like a, a you know, 
not in a patronizing way and not like a way to like, I'm trying to like pander to anybody. It was just like, oh, this would be really cool. And I remember at that time, there weren't a lot of people doing it. I'd say that I was like the first or the greatest or anything like that. It was like what I was looking for, I just wasn't seeing it. And I remember when I was trying to do it, the thing that I kept getting was, this reminds me of Boondocks. And I, and I, I, I swear to you, I could not stand that for the longest. I hated that. <laughs> like so many people were like, huh, looks like Boondocks. And I'm like, because that was the that was the only thing that was like the only thing dude like like even even like me going back and um when i started studying animation because like every like you know teacher gives you homework the kind of people to study and stuff like that and i always you know i've got like a dark sense of humor you know dave Chappelle is my favorite comedian you know if you get my gist so when i'm i'm getting hold of um you know, boom docs, the, the strips that came in the, in the book. I'm like, and I'm looking at this, I'm like, eh, they might be cousins, you know? <laughs> I get you. I get you. It was like, it was always like frustrating because I remember that wasn't really something that I was like looking at. Like, mm. I was privy to like LaShawn Thomas at the time, but I wasn't like taking inspiration from him. I was more so taking inspiration from things that he might have taken inspiration from. Right. You know, Kazuki Nakazawa, you know, uh, Koji Morimoto, like stuff like Studio 4C kind of stuff. You know, I love that type of animation. And I was always trying to do it, but at the same time, I did not have the Photoshop skills because there was no there's no iPad member that that at least Procreate wasn't a thing. So I had to use Copic markers. So I was like coloring stuff in with like markers and all this type of stuff. But I was also looking at Final Fantasy work and like trying to paint stuff. And I was just doing that's how all my traditional stuff was. But in my head, I always wanted it to look like a certain way, like cell shaded, like animation, kind of similar to how it's looking now. But I did not have the tools that I wanted to make it the way that I want it to look. Right. You know what I mean? And it's funny because people will, will kind of like want me to go back to like some traditional stuff. And it's like, no, I was doing that out of necessities. I didn't, literally didn't have anything else. But people really like that style. And I will go back to do traditional stuff. But it's just, I want to do other things. I never wanted to be someone that just had one set style and could just do one thing. I wanted to do different things. Um, but back to like that whole era I was doing that kind of work and I think I just kind of just kept like hammering down with that I remember somebody I don't forget it um my friend Sam god bless him <laughs> he came up and he saw like a drawing I was doing of one of my characters Rush and he was like oh man and the things that people say when they can't when they can't Put it they can't pigeonhole it he's like huh is this like superman meets roots and i was just like what my god but he didn't know any better yo, he really did it yo he's like that's he's a like, wild superman. take and that's I was like, crazy i'm like no no it's not superman meets roots no <laughs> <laughs> You know, but it, it just, so it's just like trying to like form your, you know, your style and your vision on something. And then over time, I, I, I again, I was in my twenties. So I was a little, it's kind of an asshole because I was like trying to figure this thing out. And as I was trying to figure this thing out, you have people that would see what I was doing after I did all the math and it would kind of start like kind of imitating what I was doing. And I'm like, hey, no, that's not, that's not, that's my thing. And it's just like, yeah, I'm going to do this too. Like, oh, and it just kind of spread. And I just, you know, and at that point, you, once it's out there and like the zeitgeist of like the, the fucking internet, you can't even think about that. Yeah. You know, but I was just, I remember being so passionate about it because I was trying to create something and I was trying to like really hammer, you know, hammer it in to people like, this is something different. And then, instead of getting like, like recognition or whatever, cause I was still, you know, 
it, it had to be about me. You know, it had to be one of those things where like, I'm going to be the blah, 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 blah. You know, it was kind of, I felt discouraged. I was like, damn, nobody gets what I'm trying to do, but then everybody keeps taking from it, which I hated, you know? And then over time I got over it. <laughs> like, I just like, eh, whatever people. But then what I started doing was I started changing it. I started changing my style. I started streamlining everything. And then I started like getting into like minimalism. Cause I remember the Square Enix stuff, the designs were really complicated. But the thing is, it doesn't translate well into animation. Mm. So it's like you find a way to streamline these designs. So then I started like kind of like pulling back and being like, okay, maybe, you know, it doesn't need that many, like, it doesn't need that many fucking belts. It doesn't need that many zippers. It doesn't need this or that. And then it just kind of, you know, kept going. And then they hit a point where I just got really discouraged with like manga in general. So I felt like nobody was getting it. And then I was like, I guess I have no other choice but to conform and like, you know, try to shoot for the big two. Because that was the thing. You got to get in the big two. You got to get in the big two. Everyone at SCAD, you got to, you got to just fucking, you know, in the Marvel or, or, you know, DC. And that was the, that was the thing. So I remember like trying to like apply for Marvel, but the thing I would get was like, my style was like two manga, you know, it's just really, 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 really funny if you look at today, <laughs> but you know, but that was, that was the thing. It was, it was like, Oh, it's too manga. It's too this, it's too that. Oh, it's not ready. And I'm like, okay, you know, and eventually I think I hit a point where I got frustrated with like trying to like do that. And I was like, no, I was going to do my own thing. And then that led me to doing like manga stuff again. You know, what's funny. I stepped away from manga for I want to say like at least a good year because I wanted to just grow and I wanted to like try to do other things I was like all about superhero shit um it was my friend Brian that actually told me he was like oh man I know you're not reading manga right now but there's one that you should probably check out and I was just like you know no I can't do it this is my email here this is the no, I can't do it right now. I'm looking at, you know, superhero comics and I don't want to fucking look at it. He's like, just give it a chance. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to fucking do this. And then it ended up being, you know, he showed me this, this, this manga it ended up being One Punch Man. And that shit lit a fire in me. Something fierce. I was just like, this is the greatest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and I was like, and I, I had, been reintroduced to use camera again and the thing is i've seen use camarada's work when i was like i want to say middle school is it middle school high school no i might have middle school i show 21 it was the it was the very first uh chapter of i show 21 and it was the scene where like one of the bullies i think it might have been it might have been like issue why you want or whatever but is one of the bullies was telling senna to go get something and he's like, oh, go get me this, like, drink or something like that. And, like, the way it's drawn, like, Senna runs, and then he, like, runs back. And he's like, oh, they didn't have any. And he's like, what? There's no way you wouldn't check. But he was just that fast. Right. You know, but it was drawn was so goddamn funny. And I saw that same type of energy with, like, One Punch Man. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Long is the shit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, and then I just kind of leaned back into it. Um, I think also one of my heroes was definitely like, like we talked about earlier was uh, Takeshi Obata. Like I remember, you know, that was like my, that was my foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just like, I have to be as good as Takeshi Obata. No one is better than Takeshi Obata. I have to be, I have to be as good as Obata. And I figured, you know, if you aim that high, You'll be some kind of decent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like your best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and then it, and then it was like, okay, I need to figure out how to do my own thing, and then, I'm you know, start looking at like other artists, and I remember being really like everybody being really fucking inspired by um, Olivia Quapel. Like, I could sing that man's Ooh. praises all day. Yeah, yeah, like Livy Quapel, like yeah. the, the yeah. grip that man had on my work. 
Jeez. <laughs> that's 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 another one as well for me. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. No, Carpell, like he's had, but he that's he's just one of those artists that you see his work and you just want to draw like him. Like he just he just had to in a chokehold. For as long as you, like it's just you're gonna you're gonna want to draw like Olivia Quapel at least once. <laughs> it's, like, it's you know what like I I like vicariously live like when it comes to like drawing this kind of stuff because uh, for a while I stepped away as well from mm. art. So when you mention these names, like it it, it has a it has me on chokehold because like the artist in me is like. Yeah, like that's that's legit. That's the shit right there. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I and it just and it it just bursts a sort of a sense of energy in me, like into art. I get it's almost like a magnet, you know, the, like these artists and their styles and and what they bring into paper and what they bring into life. To me, is like it, it's it's a magnet for me, you know. So uh, I, you you just mentioning that, yeah, I'm, yeah, man, that's that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's. You know, it's good to like get these things out and like talk about it because people can you can see like oh I was influenced by this like oh, I was influenced by that and then people kind of you know you meet kind of like oh you saw that too and blah 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 and then you start looking at the timeline and you're able to like pinpoint exactly when certain art trends probably came up because you're like right. you, can, you can trace it you'd be like oh that's how that led to this um, I'm trying to think who else who else was there there was Quapel. Um, I remember really getting into um, Ronald Wimberly, Chase Conley, like those guys. Like I remember it was Olivier, it was Ron, and it was Chase. And I remember just like seeing these three brothers like draw and like their work just, it just influenced me so much. And it was just like, this is the coolest. This, these, they, in my eyes, they drew the best, the best black people. <laughs> like they drew the best. I was like, they look, they look so fucking cool, you know. But then there was like, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to do what they do. I want to like learn that and yeah. then try to do it my own way. And I want to try to figure out how I can crack this code with like these influences that I have, like from Japan, versus like how black people actually do it. But how do I do it? And how can I like fuse it together and how can I make something new out of it? And it was like, you know, I think about that. What is it? The fucking, the Patrick meme, like the one where he's like the scientist and he's got the, you know, have you seen that one where it's like me trying to figure out how to create this, like the perfect like, art style or whatever. And then like the execution is me with having like the, the like bolted to my head and I'm like, mm, it's still not it, you know, but that was that was always the drive of like trying to create this 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 feeling of like all my influences and putting it in a way that was like not a joke like mm-hmm. something that people go oh man you know this feels familiar but this is this is something entirely new um that was like always what I was going for but yeah no I hear that man and and I I I I feel it on your work man I I really do I resonate with it and 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 so does the the community whenever we picked up your your book so that's what's up man but look moving on uh to- I want to touch on this topic that um I feel like you're super into it I'm super into it and I'm pretty sure any other black person is uh resonates with this which is Black hair in the industry, um, whatever industry you wanna you wanna focus in, oh. <laughs> it has oh, its man. issues. We've heard from actors, actresses. We see it in comic books. We see it in games. I mean, just the other day they just dropped a they just dropped a character which is very known with a hair that looks like. Um, uh, Killer manga. I'm like, yo, is everybody stuck on his hairstyle now? What is going on? And um, the name of the, the model that that dropped that hairstyle, I think, in 2016. Everyone credits him for it, and I think it's true. I think that Harry, I forgot what his name is, Harry something. Mm. But he had a hairstyle, and it's like this man dropped this one picture, and everyone <laughs> has been doing it for years. You know, 
It's like, it's don't like, we have any of his styles? Like, what's going on? No, we don't. We only come with like five. Right. That's it. <laughs> It's crazy. So obviously, that's one of the things that I picked up is one of the things that I really loved about um, Static. It was his hairstyle. And obviously, at the time, I was growing my hair because obviously it was in COVID, um, which was, wasn't was planned. I always told myself I'd grow my hair when I'd be like a granddad. But COVID came and they shut down the barbers. Now, yeah. We all, yeah. we oh, know yeah, how important time. our barbers are to us, but to the government, it wasn't a necessity, you know? Mm-hmm. So out of necessity, I grew my hair and I found someone who um, I could see my hairstyle with. And obviously you being someone who has designed your own hair patterns, um, you as a creator, bro, like how do we educate these companies like on this issue? It's very simple. We've all been saying it. It's hire black people to do these things. Like just, just if you're thinking about doing it, just consult a black person. Just, just bring in a black artist and have them, just have them do it. You know, like that's pretty much it. And don't do it as like, well, diversity hire. No, just, it's a thing of like, you just want to get it. You want to get it right. That's that's what it is. You know, um, it's funny you mentioned like the, the static hairstyle. Um, because when they changed everything, like, you know, the, the book, the stuff I had got, like he had braids in like the, the milestone, I think it was like, uh, whatever the milestone launch was, they had showed me some stuff where he had braids and I was like, oh, okay, we're doing braids. And I had to kind of work off of that. And that's why static had like the duck bill cap and all that type of stuff. I was working off of those designs and trying to like bring it, you know? Um, but when I did the, the braids i was like well the cornrows I don't... you know but i was like well if we're gonna do that and it's set in today's time it's like what would static actually look like if he was a kid today you know and then i was just like looking around and i have like brothers that are like around that around that age the time and you know i'm like okay and i would go to like the gym and there's like a high school <laughs> like right next to the gym and then you'd see like kids like kind of come around and kids look way cooler now than we did like growing up they just look like super cool and i'm like okay okay i think i know what what needs to be done and i like gave him like that kind of hairstyle of, of reflecting the youth of today and like i got so much shit for that <laughs> Like people gave me like so much shit for that hairstyle, but I was trying to do something different. You know what I mean? I was like, well, you know, let's, let's give him that. Cause like he didn't have hair. It's just, it was braided, but you know, people were just like, Oh, I can't believe he you know did this. We fast forward. And now people kind of look back at that hairstyle and be like, man, Nick was really trying. He was trying to, (laughs) Oh, what's that? What's that Thanos meme? You know the the. Oh, uh, um, you can you can run from it. <laughs> no, 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 not that one. It's the one where he was like, "Perhaps I was too hard on you." You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's that's how I feel. I'm just like, you know, it. You know, it, it it lit a fire in some people, and people like really appreciated it. But I think when it comes to like this industry, you know, listening to you know, those black voices and being like, Hey, you know, maybe don't do the same haircut that's been done a million times. And it's not like people aren't privy to it. It's been enough years right now. I know things are in development. I know things like that happen that take you, but when you see it and you keep seeing it, it's just like, okay, you should probably avoid this. So we're going to, we're going to join the roster of the comb over locks. <laughs> everybody i was i thought about like doing like a really funny comic about this like i was gonna do something where i don't have time to do this obviously just like a you know it's like a dark room and the spotlight like this shines down on like you know whichever character it is in this case eddie gordo he's got the locks that we all know and then these hooded figures step out of the shadows and, you know, one by one, they unveil their hood and, you know, it's a character from fucking, I don't know, some Riot game, got that hairstyle. 
and another character step forward, you know, and then takes the hood down. And he's got that hairstyle. And they're like, you know, their time has come. You know, <laughs> and it's just another character step forward. And it's, you know, it's it's Echo. Another character steps forward, you know, it's Miles Morales. And then like one person walks up with like the clippers and it's like, it has to be done. He takes it, he takes it off. And it's, it's Killmonger. And it's just like you're looking around, and you're seeing all these characters with the same hairstyle. And it's like, oh, you thought you could escape? <laughs> You've been indoctrinated into, and it's like, no, please, please, please save it. <laughs> oh, dude, it's so like the initiation. Oh man, it's like the Illuminati of black hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, it's like, no, they got it. Like that's how we react to it. Like we react to it. Like it's like, no, oh, they got him. It's it's, it's it's so bad that everybody has the same reaction. I mean, as soon as I mentioned it, you already know, like, because it's it's right there. And and for us, it's like, yo, like, it, it, it's, it's almost like they've never been to a barbershop. You know, when you go to the barbershop and you got the poster, right, with different yeah. haircuts, you know, you got, you even got Ludacris in it, even though you're not supposed to have Ludacris in it. <laughs> but it's like, how do we have all these things and they just don't care of making sure when I'm playing, I'm buying your product that it's also going to represent the stuff that I love. Do you know what I'm saying? Especially when, if it comes to characters customization, you know, yeah. we're living in an era where it's like more and more customizations, but when it comes to our hairstyle, it's like, it's so minuscule. You know, and and people are always vocal about it, but as we can see, two days ago, it, another one pops up, and this is a well-known character. You know, I can't yeah. imagine what people in Brazil are going through right now. They're probably riding in the streets right now. <laughs> I think you know, and it's it's not like well, all right, um, receptive to to criticism. Like I think it's just you know, in those rooms, it's a matter of like, huh, we probably should have just had that one guy. We should talk to that one guy about this, but sometimes they 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 don't know, and it's just like, wait, are, is that actually offensive? And it's like, yeah, they we don't know, like, just like, oh, okay, well, like, and I I only say that because of like my experience with working with like Japanese people, um, they really really don't want to offend, yeah. So it's kind of like it's like, hey don't do that and it's like oh is that is that bad do we should we not it's like yeah don't, 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 don't. it's like okay <laughs> you know? it's just like we'll change it we'll change it we'll change it you know um and that's just kind of like how that how that usually works in this case you know it's like here's the other thing i would want to say and i i think this is really important if you want you see something on a property you love and you see it's being handled a way that, you know, is not favorable to you. And you want to be a part of that franchise. The worst thing you can do is go and attack the people that made the thing. Like, I guarantee you, if you go and you start harassing people that are behind the, the property that you love and you start like being like just mean to them and like bullying them and talking shit about them you're not going to get that job. Like you're not going to get hired. I wish more people understood that. Mm. Like, it's like, okay, you're an artist. That's great. That you're an artist, but do you think the creator of, you know, these properties, do you think they're going to want to work with you after you just shout on them for doing things that you didn't like? Mm. You just went in a whole video about all oh, it's, it's ruined. Now it's just, I would have done this. It should hire me. They're not going to hire you. Because you you are an asshole. Like think of it like this: you think you have so many people that want to work on static, and they think that it's just it's just drawn static. It's just him on that you know on the board. He's doing his thing, and he's just a black kid with electric powers, and that's what it's, the whole book is going to be. And it, no, no, there's a lot more that goes into it. It's a lot harder than you think. There's a lot of pressure that comes along with it, and the thing is you go out of your way and you want to attack the people that are behind it. 
and are working on it and are trying so hard to make this thing for you, trying to please you. And then you're just like, oh, um, you, you, you'll hire me though, right? And it's like, no, no, or not. Right, so hey, I say this. If you want to like work on these games, you know, you can you can have critique. You can hey, hey, here's how I would have done it. You know, here's an alternate idea. You have, there's a way there's a way to say it without being a jerk. There's a way of saying it without just being like, you know, all of you suck and you guys could have done better and you guys don't listen to black people and you guys, you know, do the, the blah 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 blah. You don't care and just start just putting all these wild assumptions on these people that if you just say, hey, maybe, maybe do this, you know, they're more receptive to that. They might be like, oh, okay. No, I posted that, uh, like my take on Eddie Gordo. And then I saw um, that like Michael Murray had commented on it. He was like, now that's, this is actually pretty dope. That's the producer of Tekken. That's the guy who like works with Harada. Do you think if I had been like, since they don't fucking know what they're doing, blah, 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 they should have done this, blah, blah, blah. Do you think do you think they're gonna respond to that? Hmm. They're not. They're not gonna respond to that. They're gonna be like, okay, you know, they'll be like, ah, here's what I would have done. Here's what I here's what I think would have been cool. You know, doing this for fun, enjoy, Let's put it out there. You might get you might get some people to like listen, but don't misunderstand me when I say. I am also sick of that hairstyle and would very much like for it to go away. <laughs> and, and in my own, you know, offline, Bruh. <laughs> offline, I'm sitting there like, you know, the, you know, the fucking, the Charlie Brown meme where he's like standing in front of the window with his hands behind his back. Like that's, that's me. Like every time I see that, I'm like, yo, yeah, I, f- I think that's everyone. I think that's everyone. Like, <laughs> they did the haircut again. No. But I think I think it'll people will listen and it takes time, but people people will hear it and they'll listen and things will change. Um and the other thing too is I see a lot of statements online where people say like, oh well, we're not in the room, we're not in the room. And that's not entirely true. There are people in the room. There are people that are really fighting on your behalf to make sure that like, hey, we get some cool stuff. You know, it may not be in the areas that you that you would expect to see or you want to see it, but there are, it doesn't mean people aren't trying. People really do try and, you know, try to get things made and try to get things to change. But you have to like present some of this stuff to like higher ups to try to get them to understand it. And that can be hard. That can be really hard. But it's not that we're not in the room. Like, I think people need to get that out of their heads. Like, it's like, are people listening to us in the room? That's that's the thing. People are in the room. It's like, who's listening? Like, this movie came out not too long ago called um, American Fiction. Mm-hmm. The scene in there where there's this really bad book that the character jokingly writes and they're trying to like, they're going to give it like an award and you're like, Oh, this is this and that. And the two black writers that are there are like, you know, we don't think that's a good representation of black people. And we probably, you probably shouldn't put that out there, blah, blah, blah. And the white writers are like, they look at the, the, the board and they're just like, well, yeah, but we just, they say this to the two black writers in the room. They're like, yeah, but we just, we really want to elevate black voices. You see? <laughs> we think we it's hard to listen to black voices while saying that to the two black people. They're like, hey, don't do that. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of like that. Um, but again, I think it's, it's, it'll change over time. Like enough people, you know, are working and enough people are like trying to to get these things to shift so it's like just have faith it's it'll happen now uh, speaking of people uh there's been some controversy controversy uh recently about around your work and and as a content creator we receive it all the time 
And and I get it. I get it. Uh, much like he was explaining about the hair situation, how you approach, but a lot of times it comes from a, a place of fandom. And because when they found you, they loved you so much. And as you leveled up and start doing things differently, uh, you know, they're not used to it. They're not used to it. Uh, for example, some people have, you know, issues with the way you've done static in, in season two. And, you know, as a creator, how do you take that in? You know, because for me, it's easy because I can talk to my two brothers. Um, while um, it might be harder for other content creators or artists um, if they don't have someone to confine with and have these hard conversations with, you know? Um, so I feel like this is the perfect opportunity for us to break it down and also shine the light on those who may have made that mistake in the past, um, you know, hard criticism and, you know, where they can be like, oh, hold on, you know, um, I hear what these guys are doing and that they care. Uh, it's just that I don't have all the information mm -hmm. and I'm just overexcited, well, you know. I think my first mistake is I care way too much about what people think. I honestly do. I care way too much about what people think. And I try too hard to show people that I'm human. You know, I try too hard to show people like my flaws and be like, hey, you know, just a regular guy. But people don't really want to hear that. <laughs> like they they don't they don't see it that way. They're just like, well, no, you, you're, you're the guy. You only exist on a screen <laughs> like and therefore you're not real and you don't have feelings and fuck you. <laughs> like that's pretty much, you know, how it how it feels. Um, I used to vent those frustrations and you know try to you know meet people where they're at and try to like talk about it and express to people like how difficult some of these things are but eventually i just had to kind of there was a whole point i think even with like static like if everyone had something to say and i just like shut my comments off for like most of like the first season i just didn't allow anyone to talk to me because I knew it was going to get to me and I knew it was going to mess up my work. And I was already under a lot of stress as it was just from doing it. So I just needed to like, kind of keep going. Some people will see that as like, Oh, he's standoffish or he doesn't want to talk. It's like, no, it's not necessarily that it's just, I have to focus. And I, and I know that I'm going to internalize what's being said to me and really 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 like break it down to the point where it's just like it consumes most of my day it's just like oh man you know and i'll take it to heart um i wish i need to stop doing that um so it can be hard when people are dead set on like creating this this character you know, on you, like based on you, like in their head, you know, and they only know what you give them on social media. And, you know, they're like, oh, can you believe he blocked me on blah, blah, blah? It's like, oh, he blocked me too. Fuck that guy, X, Y, and Z. But they don't consider, it's like, hmm, did I say some rude shit to him <laughs> that was just completely unwarranted? That he was just like, I'm not dealing with that today. Like, you know, that does happen, but I think, you know, trying to consider everybody else's feelings and not being kind to myself is something I have to really stop doing. So I try to talk to my friends about it. Um, I try not to go online as much anymore when something is really, really hard. Um, now, like my, my girlfriend, she doesn't even she catches me like saying some like emo sad boy shit. <laughs> She's like, delete it. I like him in You know, um, you know, it's, it's tough. Cause I was like, I wish that people really understood that 
you know, I'm just a, a person at the end of the day. And like, I have goals and ambitions and I have, I have bills, I have hardships, I have ups and downs. And, you know, just because I'm drawn, just because you see like a fucking, like a, a blue check that you can, you can fucking buy. <laughs> like they need to understand that it's like, that's not what, it, what it's about. Like all the stardom and all that shit. It's like, that's not what it's about. It's like, I just want to do my work. And I've always kind of been like that where I'm like, I just want to do my drawings and not be bothered. Like I have extremely high anxiety. Like I, I don't want to argue online. I don't have time for that. Like I was like, again, in my, in my twenties, I might've been like, Oh, I'm Facebook. Are you, I don't even have arguments anymore like that. Like I, I just don't, I don't have the energy for it. Like I put it bluntly. I don't give a fuck. I can't, you know, I can't give a fuck. I, I won't say that. I I do give a fuck, and that is part of the problem. Mm. But I have the energy to to put on that. I can't let myself put the energy towards that. I just gotta put it in my work. And like, I see it like a lot of things that people say about me, and just like, man, that is a hundred percent wrong. I think the most hurtful things is when. People say, oh, he's lost his way. Oh, he's not doing this. He's not doing that. When are we going to get Dream Vesper? When are they going to, when's he going to do? And they have no idea, like, all the other stuff that I'm doing behind the scenes. It's like, yep. you know, I'm meeting with, like, directors. I'm meeting with, like, CEOs of companies. I'm trying to do this on a big scale. Like, it's not just, I don't want to just put it out and just kind of came and went. I'm like, no, no, no. I really, if I'm going to do it, I want to do it right. You know what I mean? And I know it's going to take time. And I wish that more people understood that. So, and you know, and, and you can't, you can't just like get online, like, and just, just be on your chest and be loud about it and be like, I'm doing this and you can appreciate it. Like, you don't, I don't want to hear that. You know, it doesn't look good. So you just kind of just keep, keep working. You just, I feel, I feel like part of the problem is that, um, when people find us at the end of the, people usually find us at the end of a project, right? And our at the end of a product. Um, because they were they were part of the process of how you got there, they only get the they weren't part of the process how you got there. They only got the delivery, right? Or a comic book or a video, uh, whatever may be the case. And they think that's where you're going to stay while, you know. Um, they don't know what goes behind it, the struggles, uh, what you're trying to fight today, things change, the economy change, and we have to deal with all these things while being in a creative mode and delivering it to these people. Uh, if I was to look at our things, in, if I'm to look at the way things are in life right now, um, we're living in pretty shitty time. You know, if, if we're to look at you know, the things that we just yeah. dealt with, yeah. you know, yeah, we were locked up for like three years, you know, yeah. like the world was just recovered itself. But here I am creating, uh, creating shit for you, for you to escape the hardships of life. You know, you know what I'm saying? And, and you want to give me shit, <laughs> you know, I'm on your side. Uh, you know, I'm not the ops here. And I used to take it to heart. A couple of years ago, and you know, a couple of years back, I'd be like, "Motherfucker, I just, I just been editing. I ain't slept. I'm going to work, and you're saying all these stuff." But then, what I ended up doing was, was look beside how uh, I was feeling and looking at it differently, and I came to the conclusion that you're just excited for me, you know. Um, and that's why you're here and you follow my work and you read my work and there's a level of care. But also at some point, I need to funnel what I take in and what I leave out. And I feel that's so important because once you're able to do that, it's like, I can be in the comments, I can be in the comments now and someone writes a negative, um, about us, something negative about us. And that can be like, yo, say fam, have a blessed day. And they were probably thinking that you was going to reply with the same energy. And then when you come on top with the positive energy, 
they're not, they end up reflecting on their approach and be like, you know, oh man, maybe, I, you know, I was being a bit of an arsehole. Uh, maybe I'm being a bit too harsh. And so I kind of learned that through my own experience, instead of just attacking back, I get, uh, I get it sometimes it's hard to do. Especially, you know, if you had a, a bad day or you're going through some personal stuff, you know, you've got anxiety um, and they might have caught you on a bad day. So for us, if we can find this superpower where we can separate things and be like, I can take this criticism uh, or you can fuck off. <laughs> um, I'm not interested. Um yeah, it's like you don't have to reply to everything. Sometimes you'll see things, and like I've definitely seen comments where I'm just like, Ooh, so. <laughs> you know, and then just like, just move on, you know. But there's times where some sometimes someone will make a comment that is so just ass backwards and completely false and just just wrong in every single way and you don't even have the time to break down how wrong it is you're just like that's such a crazy reach and it's so incorrect and i don't even know where to begin <laughs> to correct you on that i'm just like okay i'm not gonna deal with that you know but now you know you also have to be careful like how you reply to people because it's like you never know who's watching. Mm. You know, never know who's watch watching. So you can say the wrong thing and I'm like, oh, that how he responds to people, you know? And you're just like, oh, don't do that. Don't do that. And that was my problem. Like, I was definitely someone that was like, oh no, anybody can get the smoke. I was like, you want to say some shit? Well, shit, okay. I was like, you know, Madaru Chia. Like, I was like, I will fight all of you. I don't <laughs> like and now I'm just kind of I don't know. You know, you know what the sick thing about that as well? Most mm. of the people in those comment sections, if they see you face to face, they wouldn't say shit to you. Mm. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. Mm. Like, so, and that's another thing I'm like, that's why I like, it's easier for me to be like, ignore it. Do you know what I mean? Because I, yeah. I know, I know, like, I'm 6'5". Like, see, you know what's funny? <laughs> okay. I you know what's fucking hilarious? People think like I saw this this one guy in this in this video. He's like, "Oh, you're like six three, and like you got hit by a car, and what I'm saying like affects you, and blah blah." blah. And I'm like, and, I, and he's going all about all this, and all I kept thinking in the back of my mind is like, "I'm not six three. <laughs> like I'm like, I'm not six three. I've not, I've never been six three. I'm like, I'm, I'm six feet with boots on. I'm five eleven. <laughs> Like I just recently got to five eleven. I was five ten for the longest time. Like I was like Spider Man height for the longest time, and then I finally hit five eleven. And I'm like, all right, five eleven. Wear boots, six feet, great. But I've never been six three. But people, the the stuff that people will project onto you, it just be like, oh, you're like this like six three swole guy that blah blah blah, and you don't you you like punch babies? I'm like what? <laughs> no, no, I don't. <laughs> it's like it's the wild shit that people just say about you, and it's like, oh, you know, I heard he did this, I heard he did that. Oh, yeah, I bet you. That's that kind oh. of stuff is out of our control, and it's like I always, it, I always have this conversation with other content creators because, like, you know, it's 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 hard because we do so much, and mm. a lot of content creators really don't know how to deal with it. You know, a lot of them usually come out of social and stuff like that. But mm. I feel like us as a community of creators, the more that we talk about it, the more we can figure this thing out, the safer we'll be out there, like online. You know what I'm saying? Because I know most times out in the real world, they won't say shit to us. Do you know what I'm saying? They'll just mm. probably cross the road, probably see us and run across the road. But um but yeah, man, and, you know, hopefully we'll get to a good space where it's like we're able to deal with these, these people uh, better. All right, now we get to the part where the TCM fam have sent you some questions, which majority are based on static. And the first question um, 
is what if there was a static movie coming? Which actor would you like to see casted as Virgil Hawkins and who would direct the movie? Uh, I, I have a person for this. Um, I think the actor's name... Um, this, this is us right now putting into the universe the, you know, the movie coming... I think he's he's super young right now, and I think he's but I think he's like got what it takes. Um, it's this kid named um, Christopher Farrar. Um, he was in a few things. I think he was in Abbott Elementary as well. But okay. like he's he's like young. I'm like I think by the t- by the time Static comes out, you know, if it should come out, I think he'll be, you know, a good a good. You know, choice. And everybody's always just like, "Oh, are you gonna pick uh, the guy from Stranger Things?" I'm like, everybody always says that. I'm not gonna go for the the no most way. typical. No way. I I didn't know. Well, I'm not, not as Virgil. Nope. Not him. Nope. Nope. No. Like, too, too small. small. Right. Too small. Twice. Yeah. The swag doesn't fit. Well, then with Virgil, Virgil is Virgil is like five eight. He's supposed to be. I remember Dennis like specifically was like, "Virgil's not tall." And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Listen, it's like Virgil's giving me a tall. tall, tall guy for me, man. Yeah, Virgil, he's definitely like he's like five, five, eight, five, nine, around that 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 height. Now, I think when he gets older, he'll get taller because his dad is tall. Yeah, but when I drew him. It's like, okay, he's like five, five, eight, and that's like the notes I got from Dennis. So I think the, if that kid doesn't have like a crazy growth spurt, then probably him. Um, in terms of director, I really, really think. Um, what's his name? I know it. I just don't know why I'm not liking it right now. Yeah, uh, Rick Femuyiwa. You know, he, yes. you know, you know that. Yeah, that's a hey, yeah. hey, that's a legit pick, bro. He should direct it because he can. He, he can do tension and like you know drama and everything, but he can also do comedy. And I'm like that. That kind of if you've seen Dope, that kind of like vibe i'm like he can definitely bring i was watching like something else he put i think it was on youtube like a short film or something but it was just like the way that the characters talk and like his humor and like the timing i'm like oh this is static i'm about to research that straight after this bro he he could definitely do static but in terms of like cinematography it has to be bill pope like the guy who did fucking like Scott Pilgrim versus the world and Spider-Man two and like the matrix and Shang-Chi and like, that's the perfect person to do static. Like it where needs to have. For. Yeah. That's yeah. Where you're like, going for. Mm. Yeah. Especially the way he, on, on the, on the, uh, on the um, electric, um, surf or whatever thing is on, like, mm-hmm. With the movements, yeah, I I see what you're going yeah. for. I see what you're going that's for. A, that's exactly where I think it 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 needs music. The music's tricky. It's like the score. I think, um, I really felt like uh, Ludwig uh, Göransson could definitely do it. The guy who, like, you know what I mean? Like that's <laughs> like that in my head. The static movie is so clear. Yo, I'm like, that's yeah. Listen, guys, whoever's listening to this at the studios. I just, I just need a feature in the background. That's, that's all, man. Maybe someone Virgil bumps into. I'm cool with that because what we're doing today, right now, yo, we crazy, it's crazy, so, crazy. So funny, I've definitely like, been in like Dennis's ear and like Reggie's ear about this. Where I'm like, just please do this. You fucking, you need to be, you need to do this, do this, please. <laughs> you know, but I think, uh, I think Rick family, I think he was, he was supposed to do like one of the Flash movies and he didn't. Do it, but I'm like, I hope that you know he's able to come back to. DC he's so and, legit, man. He, he's so legit. I really enjoy like, his his episodes in the Mandalorian. He's super mm-hmm. legit, man. It's like it's the it's the most obvious choice. It's like just get him to do it, you know. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much my casting for it. You know what's funny? Um, Ebon. Like I, I remember obviously in the comic. Like I always envisioned um Mahershala Ali as like the voice of, of Ebon. But it wasn't until recently I was watching uh Raising Canaan. This is gonna be a wild hot take. But I think Joey Badass is the perfect choice for like Ebon. 
Joey. If you Badass. watch Raising Canaan and watch his watched performance, it. I ain't watched it, but I do listen to Joey Badass. I do. If you if you if you watch his performance in that and like just imagine Ebon, it's like, yeah, that actually works. Because if if Ebon's not like a he's not an old man, he's mm. still kind of young. Yeah, he's, you know, what maybe I mean? just a little bit older than 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 Virgil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like I think in in the comic in this run, um, Ebon is like in his like mid to late twenties. Like he's he's like older, mm. which just kind of makes it sense wow because it's like he beats the shit out of him. <laughs> but like they're they're older. Like he's older. I think uh, Rubber Band Man is around the same age as like Sharon, and Virgil's the youngest. Mm. So Ebon became visually one of my favorite characters villains in a comic book. What was the thought of process behind depicting Ebon's character? and power since you kind of limited as he dwells in utter darkness. Hey, I just yeah. got to say, before you answer, when he first popped up on that first issue, I was like, yo, <laughs> yo. Yeah, we're, we're in. We're, we're in for a nice season with these dudes, <laughs> man. And, and, I loved, and I loved how, because usually what they do with, with, with characters who are on the opposite side of the hero if they have motives, like a real motive, you know, not just I want to rule the world and whatnot. Like you come from an actual place where it's like you're doing this because of X, Y, and Z. And a lot of the times what they tend to do is like have they kill him off or they put him in prison. I loved the ending with him. That was the perfect end you guys could have done with him, man. So shout out to you Thank lot you. for that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, Ivan, man, that's... Well, that was already the thing. I knew I I didn't want to do the the shitty thing of like, and then he sacrificed himself and then died and came into like, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> I was like, I knew right away. I'm like, I don't want to do that. Um, but I remember Ebon specifically, how this whole thing came up was obviously you had 2020 and you had like the Black Lives Matter, like protests and everything and George Floyd and, you know, Brown Taylor. Like, yeah, all this stuff that was going on in the world. All this stuff that was going on. Um, and I remember there was a particular uh, incident where there was a child named um, Quan Charles that that passed away. That was like was like killed and they found his body, and that was a whole thing. And I remember that being the first like I was already really feeling it, but I remember that particular story. Like I just sat on the couch, like in the dark, and I just I like cried, and I remember just being so angry. And the thoughts I was having, they were not the best thoughts at all. And I just remember just being like, I need to do something with this. Cause I, I, you know, that's, that's, it's, I know that's not true what I'm feeling, but I, I have some, I have some feelings about the world right now. I need to find a way to put that into something else. You know, and then I got brought on it for a static and this was like season one. And I remember like wanting to do like stuff with Ebon, but I had this story in my head you know, that I had been like cooking and I just really wanted to like do this thing. And I remember like pitching it to, um, to Dennis. And I remember just going in and be like, season two, you know, if I, if I come back, I'll only come back if you let me tell this one particular story and it involves Ebon. And I pitched it to him. I was like, you know, the wire, but with superpowers, you know, but I told him the story that I wanted and the original version of it even was like, was even darker. I just, I really like let it out and like told him I wanted to do. And Dennis was just like, holy shit. <laughs> and I was just like, this is what's weighing on me, you know? That's crazy. Cause and, like, you're saying it was darker. And when I'm going through this, I'm like, yo, this is deep. So I can't imagine how dark it was willing it, to take it. it. That's, that's what people- that's where Vita comes in because, because Vita definitely was like a great person to work with on this because they were just like, okay, you know, they work, they wrote season one and it was just like, they wanted to help me like really refine the story and like get it out the best way that we could. Cause it was, there were so many things that we had to do. And obviously, you know, with DC mouse and there's, there's certain um, things you got to put in you know, and, and mandates you have to meet and you're like, okay, I got to put this character in. And it was as a whole, it was a whole thing. Cause you have to, it's just part of the job. It's what comes with it. You have to do it. 
So anyone that's watching this and it's just like, I want to do this perfect stuff. Well, guess what? Guess what? Even though you're hired to write it, <laughs> even though you're hired to draw, there's still going to still gonna be candidates. There's still going to be things they're going to ask you to do that, you has, that has little to nothing to do with what you intended. And you have to figure out how to put it into the story and make it work. That is your job. Sorry, I don't like it, but that is, that's the job. <laughs> so anyway... I feel like I have to say that because people will like, they're like, well, why did they put this in here? Why did they do this? Because we have to, we have to do it. They don't get to do everything you want to do. I got to do about, I'd say about mm, 75% of that I got to do. That's pretty good, man. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And it was one of those things where Vita was really good at like taking what I wanted to say and then kind of being like, okay, I see what you're going for. And then they would, you know, they would write something and they're like, I would write something and they're like, I would write it. And then you would like, kind of like, okay, you should probably say this a little bit better. They're like, okay, okay, cool. You know? And they were like teaching me and there were times they would just make me, they would make me like write this thing and maybe be like, nope, you got to do it. It's part of the job. I'm like, ah, fuck. You know? And it's like, just let it out. And I'm like, ah, this is hard, you know, but it was a learning, it was a learning experience and I'm really grateful for it because I was able to get my thoughts on the page and got to see what that was like. And they were just helping me. Um, the one thing that Dennis told me that helped me, he was like, you know, static is the light of Dakota. You can make everything else around it be dark as long as static remains light. He remains hopeful and you know that was the that was the driving force so i was like you know me so i fucking love manga and shit i was like i'm gonna put him through the ringer let's let's test that let's test that optimism let's see you know does that hold up Hmm. you know and with their permission i was able to like put virgil through these things but like having virgil go through all that and like have like someone because we said it in the first season it was like oh he saw classmates you know die from like the the protests like the gas and all that stuff and he was dealing with that but it still didn't feel like it was directly linked to him in this case it's like oh this is something that is directly linked to him you you definitely you definitely feel it like and and by the end of the book you can tell like there's a massive growth within him especially mm-hmm. because what he went through and the relationship that he had with that kid like even him yeah. blaming himself and you know then building a the relationship with the kid's parents and like you guys definitely mm-hmm. took it to another level with him yeah At issue four man issue four was tough i remember people like told me that issue four fucked them up like like when uh quincy dies it hit people really hard. It hit me hard. It was so hard to to write it. It was hard to draw. There was no part of that process that was easy mm. to pull off. And there was no part of it where I was just like, you know, there was there were parts where remember when I was writing uh, Ebon, and I would sit here and I was like trying to get out what I was was trying to say, and I remember like. It sounds kind of cheesy, but like when I was writing the drafts, it would be hard because I would like I, I would have to close the laptop and I was like, this is too heavy for me to like, you know, I'd be crying, like it's too much. I have to kind of like come back to it. And then there was a time where I sat down and it sounds again, it sounds goofy, but it would it felt kind of like I'm in the room, I'm in the dark. Like I didn't think this light was on, it was just the screen. And I'm typing. And it felt kind of like the room was just filled with it, with like spirits of these people, you know, and it's just like, tell it, like tell this story, you know, and it, it sounds cheesy. I know it does, but it was just like a point where I was just typing and I just let it out. Like the bit where Ebon is just like, I can't shut it off. Like I hear all of them every day and I can't shut it off. Like, you know, that is how I felt. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, you know, how do you, how do you fight that? Like the reason that Ebon is so strong is because he absorbed all of that pain. He absorbed all of the souls of these people that died. He absorbed spanning back generations. He literally 
became the physical embodiment of black pain. How the fuck do you fight that and tell it that it's wrong? Mm. You know, you can't. You can't tell that power that it's wrong. You can't tell that anger that it's wrong. You can't quench that. Like, how do you deal with that? So, like, that's the actual darkness that Ebon represents. That's the pain he represents. That's why he's so powerful. His power spans back generations. You can't destroy him. You can't lock him up. He's just going to escape. You can't put a bullet. Th- he's got... So Ebon is like kind of OP. He was way more OP in like the original drafts. Like I was like, this should do that. But like I wanted to take it like a, a horror angle with him. Like I remember Candyman being like a really big inspiration for how I was going to depict Ebon in this. I didn't want him to feel like your villain of the week, like totally mustache. I was like, no, I want him to feel like like I wanted to feel like horror. Like Static's power is superheroes and all that stuff. Like he gets that kind of thing. His story is one of like a superhero. Ebon's story is one of horror. Mm. Like what's to him is not heroic. What's happening to him is like something that's eating him up inside. It's scary. You know, it's like all these voices. Like it's not, it's a completely different movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a completely different movie. So I was like, well, what happens when those two worlds, you know, collide and you got to see what happened with that um but yeah it was oh god it was so much darker <laughs> it, 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 it was darker we, we was it there was for a minute we was there for a minute man and i feel like by the time we finished uh the last issue there was like a sense of relief because it was like <laughs> oh, yeah yeah. It, it, yeah you guys took us there man and i feel i feel like that's 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 what that's the great thing about from where we start with season one and you completely turn on his head. Cause like, yeah, like you've got, you know, they call the, the, uh, the boomers, all that, you know, the, the riots and the protesting. And like, this is stuff that we, we see, like, if you're not directly involved with it, like you see on the TV, you, you see on the, on the, on, on the internet, but then this, the difference between that and this one is like you feel it. And I feel like because you you managed to establish that that relationship with with the kid, now you're like, oh, like that can be my my little kid, my little brother, my yeah. neighbor. So yeah. then now I don't even want to fight Ebon. Cause I'm like, because even obviously he lost his brother as well. So I'm like, I don't know how you're gonna pull this out, Virgil. I don't know, bro. Yeah, I don't know if I can be in your he's not wrong. And yeah, because and I have I, I have a dark side, I'm like, yo, man, mm-hmm. I'm I'm no Virgil today, man. I'm I'm with my guy today, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted. Like, I wanted that exact feeling, which was the reader to kind of. We didn't want. I didn't want to tell the reader who to side with. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, like no. If you think like Eva, mom, is told. I'm Team Ebon too. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, no. You know, that's how I felt. Um, but Virgil is that part. And I think even with Vita, because it was kind of, it was interesting. We were writing this. Like, Ebon in Static was kind of like, it was kind of a conversation between Vita and I. You know what I mean? Because, oh, okay, let me try to not get emotional there but it was like i was seeing all this stuff and i remember like working with vita and just being so angry and like i think the one that that really threw me was when um there's an upstate new york this person came in to like a grocery store and like just started shooting up people and you know he went to a community and just started like you know opening fire on people and, and i like, recorded this shit and i was remember just being so angry and i'm like do you see what I mean? Do you see why this is this has to, you know? And my way of thinking, Vita was like, but then you just you just create the it's you just create one more, hmm. you know, if you think like that. You know, I don't want to like misquote them or anything like that, but that was basically the gist of what they were saying. Like that's not 
that's not how you deal with it. As angry as you are, that's not how you go about it. And I'm just like, yes, this, <laughs> you know, but it's not, you know, but I'm like, that's what these stories are for, right. especially with milestone in particular, milestone in particular, specifically as a company is meant to tackle these issues. That's what milestone represents. That's what it's always represented. That's, that's, it's what, it's what it's been made for. So if there was any place to put that, it was going to be in static. You know what I mean? And I found that people really resonated with Ebon's character. And that made me like a little happy because I'm like, Ebon is my favorite character in Static mm. Shock in the cards. And I was just like, I made, I made a very clear note. Like even with Vita, I was like, okay, so here's what we're not going to do. He has to have, he has to have black air force energy at all times. We cannot, we're not going to turn him into my, my cute cuddly friend, Ebon. Yeah. Like it's not going to be, you know, Ebon's a good guy. And he's going to be like, Hey Virgil, how's it going? I was like, no, no, we got to make sure. Cause I don't want that shit. Right. Like, I want, I wanted to leave it like a crack where it's like, he can, can still go back. He can still go back to being like diabolical. If, if like the wrong thing pops off, he can go right back to being, and you I know. love, I love you guys left that open at the end because even tells me, listen, we've just completed his mission, but if you get in my way, I'm going to fuck you up again, kid. Like, I, I love that energy, yeah. man. I love you guys left that open, like, because he can always come back later on, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and much like he was just saying that that might be the wrong energy, sometimes that that's the energy you need to combat things, but sometimes that's not necessarily the energy to tackle today so maybe further down the line he'll come back and he's actually in the wrong wrong side this time you know and he'll be a great great uh, character for you to fight again so i I love how you guys left that open yeah because like he leaves he basically tells you know virgil like my friend nate said it best he was like he put virgil in and he gave him an impossible choice like he, he made it to where it's like he has to virgil has to be static he has to be the hero now and he has to make sure that things in dakota don't ever get as bad as they were getting because if they do then ebon's gonna come up and ebon is not going to spare them he's going to kill them <laughs> and it's like i don't want you that. don't want that you know <laughs> yeah you know what's, what's crazy too because i knew like we had to make it to where well what's the the power dynamic here? like Virgil can't just beat him by just turning on the light and oh it's too bright in here and I can't do it. Like we did that for like the the holding cell, but it was like the power was a little bit deeper than that. Like mm-hmm. I didn't want it to be like, I'm just gonna hit you with all this light and now you disappear. It's like, no, it has to be something more internal, something more cerebral. Like what is what is that darkness that he's he's facing? So that was why we did it that way. Also, because we like were pressed for time, and we had to like cut some some corners, which I which I hate, but it still worked out in the end. Um, there are things I wish I could have done. Like I wanted there, there was a whole bit with uh, Rubber Band Man that I didn't get to like put in there, and I like I wanted to show more of like their dynamic of like brothers because mm-hmm. that was that was the parallel, like the theme I think in. Uh, Shadows of Dakota was going to be, you know, the parallel between Ebon and Rubber Band Man or Ivan and uh, Adam versus like Virgil and kind of his surrogate brother like Quincy and just like showing that that mirror, you know, that was kind of what I wanted to to do. But we kind of got it. But there was like more in there that I wanted to like touch on, like especially with like his his dad. Like it was, I was, again, I like manga and shit. So obviously in my head, I saw it much more long form. Like right. it was, I was going to be like the fucking, the Naruto moment of, you know, uh, e- um, Ebon's father, or Batman's father, and like his mindset and his philosophy, there was something about Virgil that reminded him of, you know, hmm. his dad. You know what I mean? Like, you, you know how this goes, where it's just like, huh, you know, you remind me of him, you know, a little bit. Like it's, 
there's there were like those storytelling beats. Which brings me to like my next point, you know, shut the fuck up, which is trying to incorporate those manga elements thematically, not just like on the aesthetic level, but like how the stories are told with static. I wanted to do it like that. I didn't want it to just look like the manga and anime. It's like, no, no, I really wanted to incorporate that kind of storytelling, that level of storytelling in this. So, you know, sometimes I feel like I got in, sometimes I'm like, ah, I got to do the American comic thing, you know, but all in all, seeing people's reactions to it, um, let me know that we, we made the right choices. All right. So the next question is, uh, one of the best things I enjoyed about static comics is the cin- cinematic, cinematic elements in the art and panel work, like how speed is depicted, depth of field, creative angles, broken panels, and splashed pages. Are these elements, are these elements you think about from the beginning of the drawing or are they editorial decisions later on in the process? Usually it's like at the beginning of the drawing. Like I'll like write something because that was the beauty of being able to write it is I kind of saw it in my head and I would like do the thumbnails and I like, you know, my passes would be then like, okay, you know, let me think about this or that. And, you know, I would just kind of do my own thing. Um, and then we got pressed for time and it was just like, okay, I got to just fucking, I just got to just go. I got to go and I got to just go what's in my head. But that, especially that, that first issue for sure. Uh, that was definitely a, I'm going to aim to make this look as cinematic as I can. Like I remember that first, um, that opening scene was inspired by so many different things. Um, there was definitely uh, Ch- Children of Men was definitely like one of my inspirations. Um, Ooh, love that the movie. Foreign, yeah, the Foreigner with uh, Jackie Chan, like the opening scene of that, and I think like Terran Resonance. Like I was like trying to like get that kind of feel, and that was something that I knew. Like I'm like I want it to feel like a movie. Like I wanted that. We didn't waste any time mm. to get right. Um, so yeah, I kind of know going in when I want things to be a certain way. Um, there are certain pages even where I would just want like no dialogue and I would like kind of fight to get, to get like no dialogue in like certain spots. Cause it's like in American comics. It's like, they'll put a caption there and it's like, it doesn't need a caption. Sometimes it's like, in manga, that's like just that empty. That page, there's no, there's don't no, need anything else. Yeah. So, like, there was one page in particular that I knew right away that I wanted. I wanted that beat in that that scene. It's the scene between um, Virgil and Gene when you know when he's talking to his to his mom about like you know, Quincy and everything, and he's like feeling bad, and like that page where it's just him like staring and he just like goes like like wipes his eyes or whatever and it's just two panels but there's no dialogue and i remember like making a a bit of a fuss about that page not having dialogue i remember there was a whole thing of like no i think we should put like a caption i was like it's like it needs to be and then when it came out people like in like reviews or whatever I like, heard like some other podcasts or whatever, and they would talk about it and like, oh, then we get this one page where it's just silence. And I'm like, fucking knew it. <laughs> like, I'm, I know my shit. <laughs> you know, and like, and it oh, and the way I, you know, and I was just like, yes. <laughs> but, but that's that, that's, 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 that's the beauty yeah. of it. Like, sometimes you just go to fight because as a creator, yeah. you just, you just feel it, man. You know, it's just, just there in the air. You know what's crazy too? And it's like that's probably not the the page you would expect me to like say it's like one of my favorite pages, but it's like you would think, oh, it must be it must be this action scene, it must be that. Nope. It's this very small moment that I was trying to capture. And I'm like, I really want to show grief and make it feel real. Not just like we just skimmed over it. It's like, okay, back to normal. There's a bit where there's a double page spread where uh, Ebon is like, you know, it's the page right after Ebon like shows uh, Quincy, you know, like, you know, 
his dead body, which is R.I.P. Quincy. And it's like so sad. And he's like, you know, if you were any, like if you were any good, you know, this kid would still be alive, basically, is what he says. And the scene where Virgil just like snaps. And there's a the what Vita wrote, like it just elevated that double page spread on a different level. Like I was crying, like reading it, and it was just like when Virgil's just like, you don't get to use that grief like against me, you know? And I was just like, oh. like, it's, like Vito, Vito like wrote their ass off. Yo, Vito, <laughs> like, listen, that. Vito, I know, listen, the Vito, she goes in, but I don't know, like, but I, I feel like there's parts I can tell it's her. Not that I know any of you two, but it just feels like, yo, this is Vito. Because I also, that's one thing that it's, it's the DNA mm-hmm. of, of static. Like, yeah, like, mm-hmm. you know, you get the, the action shots and stuff like that, but I feel like the shots that hit you, that hit home, are the emotional ones. I, uh, one of one of the shots that stuck with me was in season one, when uh, mm-hmm. Virgil's dad, I think they, the police come to the door and they fight him off. And then the dad says something slick. To, he wasn't trying to be slick. He just says something about, you know, being a black man. And she just snaps on man, like, because she works at the hospital, so she knows how the industry is towards black people, especially. Yeah, yeah. I was losing my shit. I was, and I feel like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at the time, news came out about um, uh, black women giving birth in hospitals and how the yeah, the, yeah. I was like, I remember that. It's like she just wrote this at the same time the news came out today, and I was just like. That shit hit home differently, mm-hmm. and and I feel like that's that's the DNA of 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 this comic book. It's it's the family element element is the the stuff that matters. Mm-hmm. You know, action scenes we see it all the time. Yeah, it it makes it look good, but mm-hmm. does it make you care about this journey that we're going for? You know, and yeah, man. So whenever those I- scenes come up, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, Vita, Vita definitely knocked out of the part. There was there were times where I would be stuck and I'm like, ah, you know, and then Vita would come in and like they'd see that I did the best I could. And then they would come in and be like, okay. I'm like, yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and that was the whole, but then there were times where I was like, there were times where I was definitely like writing my ass off too. Like I remember a lot of the stuff with, in particular, when it came to like Ebon, I knew exactly what I wanted to say. You know what I mean? I, I struggled with like writing some of the dialogue with Virgil sometimes because I didn't believe it. Mm. You know what I mean? Because it was like it was it was hard to write a character that was optimistic and hopeful about the future when I, as the author, wasn't. You know, and it was like. I'm trying to write this, you know, and it was like, ah. so it felt good when, you know, Vita would step in and kind of like say things that's like, okay, this is how Virgil would say it. And like, or they would encourage, like, okay, you got that part, right? That's something that he would say. I'm like, okay, cool. And we just kind of go. And there'd be times where it's like, they might put something in for Ebon. I'm like, no, Ebon wouldn't say it like that. He would, he would say it like this, you know? And it was cool. Like it was, it actually really did feel like a collaboration on 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 both ends. And I think that's what made it stand out so much. Why people resonate so much is because you have these two different writers, you know, different creatives with two very different mindsets. And on paper, we shouldn't work. Mm. On paper, we should not work well together. We really shouldn't. We're so different. <laughs> We're so different. And yet that's what made this work. Right. Like it, it was so weird. Cause it was like, this really, this is gonna fall apart. It's just like, no, this is actually end up being the strongest thing. And now we're both like, okay, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> they still send me like memes and stuff like that all the time. And you know, they're all my they're all on my case about world events as they should be. And I'm like, okay try and get on top of this you know but i love vita they're definitely like a an older sibling and we don't always see eye to eye mm. we don't always get but that's that's the sibling dynamic 
like it's still all love and it's still like conversations we can hash out and be like, ah, I don't know. I feel blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, well, X, Y, and Z, or have you considered blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, huh. And that's pretty good. And then they'll say like, huh, do you think I could be a writer one day? And I'm like, okay, very funny. <laughs> <laughs> does that all the time like they'll say something like i'll i'll come to them with like my idea or like a concept or right. i'm like oh this is what i'm feeling blah 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 or even like how i'm been and then they'll say something that will stump me and i'm like hmm. pretty good and they're like oh, well you know i might i might be a writer you know maybe <laughs> i'm like you know it's cool it's cool Oh man, yeah. no! It's been it's been it's been a hell of a ride. I really enjoyed both seasons, and um, I'm looking forward for more from from you guys, man. I've I've really I've invested more and more into milestones. Um, mm. I was also reading a milestone in history. Mm. Blew my mind. I need more of that. And uh, hey, man, congrats to you and the team. Congrats to VR. Congrats to the guys at Milestone. You guys absolutely shelled and I absolutely enjoyed it. The TCN fam enjoyed it as well. Appreciate you having here, bro. And I'm looking forward for more uh, for more of your work in the future, man. And I have a feeling that you might you might tap into some animation. I don't know if you're working hey. on it, but I from what I see from your <laughs> your stuff, I'm like, it's you're not far. If you're not working on it right now, you're not far off happening in some sort of project yeah. where anime or animation comes into place there's a few there's a few things um i've got going on a few things it's like it's so tricky because it's like i don't know what i'm allowed to say what i'm not allowed to say so it's like don't say anything at all but but it's also like i'm learning about how this industry works mm. and i'm learning about you know you have your ebbs, ebbs and flows type of thing. You have your ups and downs. You have things that it's working, it's working, it's working. And it's just like, no, it's all been in axed and it's all blown to smithereens and we're not going to fucking do it ever again. And it's just like, actually we lie. We're going to keep, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. We're going. And it's just like, nope, we're going to, we're going to halt production on this or that infinite hiatus. And, you're like, and then it's just like, just kidding. We're going to keep going. And you're like, <laughs> you guys please so that can be that can be frustrating that's like one of the eye-opening things i'm learning and it's like all the i've been fortunate enough to work with people that are you know experienced in this and they're just like oh this is your first this is your first time you know trying to get that get that pitch off the ground first time that you know it's not the first time that this is this is going to happen to you it's not the, not the last time this happens all the time I mean, like Dennis like called me when I was like super distraught about another project I was I was working on. And I was just like so heartbroken. And I was just like, <laughs> but I, I I knew not to blow up too much because I'm like, that's not a good idea. But I was, I was, oh my God. And Dennis like called me and he was just like, Hey, how you doing? And I'm just like, <laughs> and he's just like, uh-huh. Like, are you are you okay? <laughs> it's just like yeah well you know that's gonna happen it's your first one and i'm like <laughs> you know and it's just like, you know um basically he was telling me like you know how many like movies and animated series and things that you know you tried to pitch and get off the ground and it, it didn't go anywhere he's like it's gonna happen you know and he and he said it in this cool dennis way of you know cheer up you know things will be fine just keep working you know and i and i appreciated that i was just like <laughs> you know and i'm still kind of a little sad but i'm also like hopeful that things are going to work out and i also think that you know sometimes in animation or any other project it might not have come together on this thing but sometimes those connections are made and then you guys come back around and you do something else. Well, like you'll see a project evolve. It's like, Oh, this was this thing, but then it didn't work out the way that we wanted it to. But then the, that same team ended up like creating this other thing. And that was the thing that ended up. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Like. It's kind um, of like you go and trust the process as well, isn't it? 
Yeah, yeah. It's it's wild. Like it's it's so so hard. And I wish that people understood that. Like it's like it's it's tough. People say that they're like, oh, I want to get into the industry and I want to do that. And it's like, okay, great. You're in the industry now. Now there's a whole other level of like problems and situations and people you got to talk to and, you know, college you got to deal with. And you find that some people can be a little bit clickish and you got to deal with like, you know, a Western side of thinking versus an Eastern side of thinking. You got to figure out all that stuff and figure out how to navigate it and not fucking get fired in the process. (laughs) We're saying the wrong thing. Like it's really tough. It's really tough. And you have to do all of that. While still trying to, you know, keep the lights on, you know, while still trying stay to stay sane, rent, you know, and stay sane in fucking New York. Like, like, it's really tough. And people are like, just leave, just leave New York. It's just, it's just that easy. And it's like, yeah, well, with, 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 with what money? I still have to find a way to make money to do that. Right. Moving costs money. Trust, trust, trust. <laughs> Just, just grind, you know. Um, but there's always there's always something, you know. People say, "Well, Kickstarter." And everyone's gonna have an answer for something. They're gonna have an answer for every single thing you say. You're like, "Well, what about this?" And they're like, "Well, you could do that." And you're like, "Okay," you know. But I would say there's there's some cool things on the on the horizon. I know I've got like another meeting for another project. Um, a lot of my older stuff. Like I, I will say that it's a lot of stuff that pertains to my older work. Um, it's just being like kind of like renamed and re repackaged, but it's the, the essence of like one of my older things, but it's being like fine tuned and, you know, remade to where it can actually like be a thing now. So that's pretty exciting, but I can't wait to talk about that more, but I'm just like, <sighs> Well, Come we're, we're looking for guess, what? guess what it won't have. Guess what it won't have. It won't have one of those fucking haircuts. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you not You're not gonna see it. You're not gonna see it. You're like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank God, nope. man. Thank God. Jeez. You will not be joining Sick that. and tired of seeing that haircut, man. No. No. Oh, but yeah, bro, look. Appreciate you coming through. Um, Thank you for having me. Hopefully we'll be seeing more from you.